much. Some of you watched this, you know, practically age in front of the camera. Thank you so much. And some of you have recently joined us. I'm so grateful that for those of you who've recently joined our partner family. But if you, and you're watching, and you want to join the partner family today, please consider doing it by going to josephz.com, or you can text the keyword join, or, or give rather, to 719-259-0029. And we want to welcome you to our partner family today, today, where we can begin to celebrate you, call you regularly, pray over you. We have quite a partner community where we call you and we celebrate with you and we pray over you. We never call you and solicit you. We just want to stand with you when you become a partner. Now, if you're a viewer and you're saying, Joseph, all I can do is pray for you, we're here for you, we love you and we value you so much. Thank you. But you do all that by going to josephz.com or texting that number. But let me also say this. I have a brand new book out demystifying the prophetic. You can get this today at josephz.com or any available distributor. And please, if you would, could you go to goodreads.com, goodreads.com, and give this book a raving review? Could you go to Amazon, give it a raving review? It would help us so much. It's part of the ministry when you do that. We're reaching more people. This book immediately was a number one new release. But here's the thing. We don't celebrate that the book is a number one new release. That's great. I'm grateful to Jesus. But you know what I celebrate when I see that? how many people it's impacting. And this book has tremendous insights, tremendous things to say. It comes in, uh, well, it comes in digital format. You can get it that way. It comes in a paperback. And you can even get it, I think, in hardback, hardcover. But I just want to say to you, you can also get it at josephz.com. You can do that. I hope you do at josephz.com. But then you can also go to those platforms, goodreads.com or Amazon, and go there and please give us a great review. I know it takes a moment to do it, but if you would do that, it would so help this ministry and help us reach more people. Demystifying the prophetic, my life's work, we put a lot into this. I know it's going to help you with where we are. You don't have to be a prophet. You don't have to be prophetic, but it can help you whether you are or whether you are not. This book will really propel you in this time. I encourage you to get it right now. Praise God. Now, we got a lot to get into today. It's really important. Jesus is Lord. Somebody shout out going red right here on the front side of this broadcast. I'm going to show you a teaching. This is going to be very impacting. It's going to help you. And I want to thank every one of you that tunes in. And you search for us sometimes in the morning because of the way uh, things are with the powers that be. So you, if you're on Facebook, please go to the search thing, type in Joseph Z, and look for us at 7 a.m. Colorado time, 8 a.m. Central time, 9 a.m. Eastern time. And I encourage you to look for us every morning. If you're on Facebook, if you're on the other platform, same thing. Just please look for us, find us, because it helps break all the suppression and the voices of the powers that be. I encourage you to do that. But I'm so grateful to you. Now, please repost this, share this everywhere, because do I ever have a word for you today? Please watch this special teaching I did at a recent conference. We wanted to capture it and share it with you. Watch this. The Spirit of the Lord wants us to really understand some things about where we're headed. And so I'm going to draw kind of an overview of it. We're going to talk about it and your role. And what we got to do, you have a part to play to alter the narrative, to alter the narrative on some of these things. Um, Jesus wants you to live, move and have your being even more than you do. He wants you to arise and shine and see victory and light and darkness more than you even want it. And a lot of people, they don't know how to how to navigate what they're facing right now, but not you. You were born to lead during this time. Because God has handpicked you in the middle of a culture losing its mind where people don't even know what they are anymore, right? And you can pound on it, but I have compassion for these people. You know, I really do. As a matter of fact, the Lord showed me that as we pray, there's going to be a rebellion from the crowd that does what it does best. Rebel. It's going to rebel against Jezebel. Jezebel's going to be at the balcony, you know? I'll get those puppies, <laughs> right? <laughs> and as she's at the balcony doing her thing, and after the prophets, I'll get those prophets, put them in caverns, kill them all, right? I think there's a sneaky thing that's going to happen. I think from behind her is going to come a little bit of you, right? <laughs> Nobody? Yeah. Yoo-hoo. 
And she's going to be there looking over the balcony, Rah! taking her testosterone shots or whatever she's doing. And, and as she's there, I'll get you, prophets. You know, I think that, I think that, you know, the Yoo-Hoo crew is going to come up from behind. Woo! And I think they're going to shove her off. And then it's going to be Jazzy Girl. Da -da 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 -da. How does she fly from a balcony? She doesn't. She hits the ground. Yeah. <laughs> da -da. Right? Bro, she didn't even bounce, right? And, and, and then it's going to be that thing. She's going to be free falling, right? And, and then the chariot came and rolled over. And then the dogs came. And, you know, I think something bad's going to happen to Jezebel. How do you fight a demon like that? <laughs> yeah. Ha, ha, ha. So we got to recognize we're in the day and the age where I believe God's going to redeem some things, do some stuff, but there is a time of complete madness. It talks about this in 1 Timothy. It says that these would be perilous times. That word perilous means violent, crazy, insane times. But the good news is on a bad day, which is what we're walking into, you are anointed to be the best there is. God has anointed you to overcome. He's anointed you to conquer. We're not supposed to look at this world and go, oh no, what, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? It's like if we look to God, we're so freaked out. God, what are we going to do? And God's like, I don't know. What are we going to do? <laughs> Can you imagine God being like that? Gabriel, I, I don't know what to do. God in a cold sweat. Oh, it's so much chaos. No, God's waiting. So we take him at his word. We quit fighting. We start uniting. Because we all know if things are too small, men fight. But if it's big enough, men unite. And then we start changing things. I've had to really work on my criticisms. Criticism for me could have been an art form. You know, I'm, I'm a very particular individual. I have strong opinions about things, in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> and, and you get to the point where you just are kind of like, man, you know, if these people would just get with the program and blah, 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 blah. And the Lord's just like, man, I need you to cooperate with me, not criticize. Start releasing faith. Well, that doesn't mean I wouldn't, you know, that I would cry if like, you know, some of the you know, lizard overlords, you know, stepped in front of a bus or something. <laughs> Thank you for that laugh. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. You will own nothing and we will own everything. <laughs> so we've got to get to the point where we start recognizing God's called us to win. The good news is, in the end, regardless of what your eschatology is, regardless of what your last day's beliefs are, we win. Amen. So if somebody ever asks you any question, you say, are you this way, are you that way? And I'm going to go through it here in a second. If they ever ask you, what's your eschatology? Jesus wins. He wins. So that's the, that's the important point. But I'm going to draw some things and we're going to walk through this because I want to just give you a scope and an understanding as to where we are. You know, there's a lot of people that are really concerned and considering the fact that Israel's got these red heifers, which came from Texas. My friend Troy Brewer's like, yeah, man, I was near that. I, you know, I know about those guys. And these red heifers, they're getting ready to do it. And you know, they don't have to really rebuild a temple to sacrifice those. It could be a, a tent. So there's a lot of things you think about. Now, I'm not pushing that, I'm not on that train. I'm just saying that there's things happening and we should pay attention. We were just over in Turkey, all right, right on the Iran border, waving at Iran, and they were waving back at us. <laughs> oh, I'm just going to rein it in right there. But. And we're there at the headwaters of the Euphrates River. I never thought in my whole life I would visit the Euphrates River, much less the headwaters. We're talking just a few days ago. I mean, just a few days ago. We're just starting to get over jet lag. We were at the River Euphrates, the very beginning of it, where it comes out of this mountain. And I said to the Lord, why are you sending me here? 
what am I doing at the Riviera Euphrates? I'm an American. And the Lord just began to minister to me and say, I need your feet in certain locations during this time because great change is coming and it's because you represent America. And so there we were and watching these things happen. Now that's the river that four angels are captive underneath. And they're going to release, be released in the book of Revelation and kill one third of humanity. That's not country, that's rock and roll. <laughs> I love you, brother. He's the only one that gets me. He's just like, yeah, man. And so, <laughs> and so when, you, when you see this, in the Word of God, you recognize there are times and seasons that are coming. Now, there's a word that the Latin community coined or the Catholics coined called sensus plenier. Sensus plenier means a deeper and a fuller meaning. It means there can be times and seasons that repeat themselves throughout history until there's a fulfillment with a re repeat. So in other words, let's take the Antichrist, for example. I think the first Antichrist was Nimrod. He was the anti-Adam. He built a tower. Okay? But then you look at history. I would have thought, man, I would have thought potentially Alexander the Great, Attila the Hun. I would have thought a lot of these guys all throughout history consider Hitler. People would have thought that's the Antichrist. He's after God's people even. And you see that kind of repetition all throughout the Bible, all throughout history, because these things are going to repeat, repeat, and it's a census plenier, a deeper, fuller meaning. What happened before can happen again, and it'll repeat until the final repeat when it's empowered with darkness and it truly manifests the real man of sin. I am personally of the persuasion he can't stand on this planet and oppose the church because we're here. That's my persuasion. Now, could I be wrong? Well, we'll find out, won't we? We'll just find out. Let's find out together. Yeah. But I could be wrong. But I, I, I don't know. Jesus said when I read it, and I think it's Matthew 16, where he said, you know, Peter, upon this rock pointing at himself, I will build this church, the ecclesia, and the gates of hell will not prevail against you. I don't care who uh, represents the gates of hell, but I would think that system of hell, that way of doing things, that's why I wrote that book, Breaking Hell's Economy, that system of darkness, that system of hell wants to manifest through an antichrist spirit. But if the man of sin wants to appear in front of us, I'd rebuke him in Jesus' name. You possessed of the devil. The gates of hell can't prevail against us. We're the ecclesia. You say, well, then you go to Revelation 13 and you see that the saints are being slaughtered by the Antichrist. How does that work? Well, there's a difference between the church and tribulation saints. It's just a thought. Now, do I believe in the rapture? I do. I totally do. Okay, <laughs> let's... Um... <laughs> I, I do. I, I, I read my Bible. <laughs> so, no, okay, sorry. Sorry, guys, I love you. If you don't agree with me, just pretend like you like me and we'll get through it. All of us together tonight. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm around a lot of friends that don't believe in that. They believe in perpetual glory. It's going to get better and better and better and better and better until it's finally really good. And I'm like, have you like looked outside? Have you followed history? Not even the Bible. Just look outside. Boeing Airlines, getting better every day. That's their, that's their new motto. Don't sit by the exit row. Yeah. Huh. Boeing, we're almost there. Okay. So, <laughs> it's been a couple days. I'm sorry. So, I get in a mood. This is, <laughs> I feel like I'm in my, my living room right now, so you got to forgive me. <laughs> Jesus is Lord. I've had many people say, I didn't know prophets were supposed to actually have fun and all that. And I'm like, man, you don't know Jesus very well. He's a joyful Lord, man. He had the oil of joy above all his yoke fellow. It means he was the most joyful man who ever lived. Think about that. The joy of the Lord's your strength. I want to have a superpower. Okay. Let me draw this. Praise God. Let's get into it. Let's talk about 
Let's say this represents eternity past. And this represents eternity future. Okay? Real quick, I'm just going to go through this. This represents everything from creation, whether you're old earth or new earth. Uh-oh. Old Testament era, you know. Um, for all the, there's a lot of people that believe the earth is 6,000 years old. I can roll with that. I really can. I've got into like, you know, people like jump me about this stuff. And I'm like, bro, I don't care. I don't even care. Like about eschatology. I really don't even care. But I just read the Bible and I come up with my own, you know, I just, I really want to know what I stand on. And, uh, and if I read things in the Bible enough that disprove what I once believed, I'll change. I'm cool with that. You know, but old earth, new earth, people get like really violent about this stuff. I've been in green rooms and like, don't, how dare you think that way? And I'm like, what? I said, have you ever looked at Gobekli Tepe? And they're like, what's that? I'm like, exactly. You should go look at Gobekli Tepe, where they found all these things that predate the pyramids. And they're super old and the carvings date it. And they show that there was something that happened before the great flood of Noah and before the time of Adam. Dun, 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 right? It's interesting. So that being said, and I'm not saying anything other than what I just said. So, <laughs> so you're in the Old Testament. There's creation. There's all this stuff that takes place. And then you come up to the, the most amazing time. So you got Old Testament, you got judgment, you got the prophets, you got all these things happening. But then we come up to the time that's the most key moment in all of history, the universe. And that is indeed the cross of Jesus, the cross of Jesus right here. Okay. This is the number one event, the main event in all of history that changed the whole game, the cross. Now, a lot of people today, they think they need to come to Jesus and, and beg and plead and squeal, and you do. You need to beg and get born again. Jesus, rescue me, right? Imagine this podium is the cross, okay? A lot of people, they come to Jesus, thank God, you repent, you give your life to him, but there's a whole lot of people that they think that after they're born again and they get on the other side of the cross, now they're saved, they think they still need to come to Jesus that way. Please, oh Jesus, ah! You know, they, they think they gotta do that. Old Testament, Jesus save me, take me out of the curse, redeem me. And once he does that, a lot of people get set stick with that model. We're not supposed to be after salvation, begging and pleading to get from him. We're supposed to receive from him and then walk in the finished works he gave us. Now, it doesn't mean that we don't admire the cross and thank him, but we walk in the finished works of the cross. We're not at the foot of the cross begging and pleading for more. He gave you everything. Okay? So that being said, the Old Testament and the New Testament era are very different. The Old and the New Testament. So after the church started, the church age, this is the New Testament era. Like I said yesterday, some people think, that the, the only difference between the Old and New Testament is a blank page in their Bible. But Jesus came to set us free, right? He came to set us free. So for the last 2,000 years, we've been living in the age of grace. We've been living in what's called the church age. Okay? The age of grace, the church age, the New Testament era. And we're going to be going through this. And this is where we are now. And suddenly after this, and this is the narrative I really wanted to get into, is that after this, as soon as this is over with and this ends, now wherever your eschatology is, we're launched into something. We're launched into what people know as three or two separate three and a half years of events. Okay? Two separate three and a half years of events. And you say, what does that mean? Well, whether your eschatology leads you to believe in the rapture, like 1 Thessalonians 4 talks about, and you say, that's not in the Bible. Well, the harpazo is in the Greek, in the Greek, but in the Latin is the word rapturo. That's where you get the word rapture. People are like, it's not in the Bible. You're right, in English, but in Latin it is, rapturo, harpazo, rapturo. So it's the great catching away, okay, here, and it could be that this is where the marriage supper of the Lamb takes place right? This could be where the Bema judgment is, where he wipes all the tears away. It's a rewards judgment. And these things happen. And then somewhere in this mix is where the Lord returns with uh, tens of thousands of his saints, right? 
he begins to come back. Behold, he comes riding on the clouds, right? And then we're in Armageddon, right? Armageddon's taking place, the Battle of Armageddon. Now, there's a whole narrative with that I could get into uh, where Jesus actually touches down. And it's so strong. I was, I was reading it to Heather on the plane where he touches down and in one narrative, it's almost like he touches down alone first, and I'd have to you know, really break into it, and I won't here, but I'll just give you a snapshot. Jesus touches down, and it's just him for a second. And I, I should, and anyway, he touches down, and he kills everybody, and he's covered in blood. And then he shows up in Armageddon, raw. And then we show up with him, and they're like, whoa. <laughs> anyway, I like it. But he, <laughs> he shows up in Armageddon. What, Heather? He's what? Oh, yeah. You remember that movie, The Patriot? Yeah. You know, and he's like, aim small, miss small. And they're like, oh, Dad, we're afraid. He's like, kill them all. You know, and they're, they're up there, and they're like, boom, 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 boom. They take out all the bad guys, right? And they're running away, and there's one scene where Mel Gibson runs with a hatchet, and he's just like, it's a little much. And then he turns around, and his kids, who thought they were tough and all that, they see their dad, and he's just like, Phew. Jesus is coming. I'm telling you. Everybody's like, oh, he's my lover. And he's your fighter. (laughs) He's going to show up and it says his garments are dripping from a wine press. Yeah, it's going to be the wrath of the lamb. It's coming. And he will unleash it at Armageddon. But Jesus doesn't have the final say. I'll show you. So Armageddon happens and in this moment... Basically, the beast and the false prophet and all that, they're put on trial. They're captured. He destroys this army with his mouth, (laughs) cuts them down. Then the beast and the false prophet are captured, and they don't go here to the pit or to hell. They go to the lake of fire. They don't pass, go, collect $200. They're like, goodbye. They go right there, lake of fire. I think that's going to be awesome. And it doesn't say how long they're captured. So it could be that they're on, on, on a stand. It could be that they're prisoners of war and Jesus is telling everyone, here's who these clowns were. And now, open the hatch. It could be like that, I don't know. But he sends them there and during this time, the devil is put here for a thousand years, right? And this is during the time when Jesus rules and reigns for a thousand years. We call this the millennial reign, right? Millennial reign of Jesus. But now, really, a lot of people, and I wanted to say something about this, whether you believe in position one, two, or three, you know what we're arguing about? Seven years. 2,000 years leading up, and everybody's bent out of shape about seven years. Seven years. In the grand scheme of thing, that's not even a sneeze on the timeline, okay? So we're looking at this. Seven years, that's what we got. Battle of Armageddon. This is when uh, the, the tribulation, it's going to be relatively not as bad here. Things will happen. But then it's going to be the great trib here, okay, taking place. We go into the Battle of Armageddon. Jesus comes back. Behold, he comes wipes out the enemies, then Jesus is on earth for a thousand years. Man, and I thought about this. I really thought about this because for a thousand years, he rules and reigns. Now think about this, our political systems, the way people are doing things now. You know, you could have relative moments of peace, you could have good things, but Jesus himself is going to come back and dominate the earth for a thousand years. He's going to fix everything. He's going to fix everything. You know, the global warming narrative will be solved, okay? All the stuff that they're dealing with, climate change, Jesus is going to show up at the WEF and be like, what's up? And Klaus will be like, we need to get all kinds of surveillance. And, and, uh, and Noah, you all know Noah Harari is going to look at Jesus and be like, oh, no, it was real. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and Jesus will show up and say, what in the name of me is going on here? Right? <laughs> so he's going to stand there a thousand years. <laughs> you guys. And so he's going to be there. 
Then at the end of this time, and I don't fully understand this, but I think it has something to do. This is my takeaway. Why a thousand years? Why even bother with this whole narrative, right? I thought about this, and I believe it's because Adam had a lease on earth. I believe Adam had a time on earth that he was allotted for to build out. This is what I take away, because Jesus isn't the second Adam. He's the last Adam. He came to fulfill what Adam was called to do. So I think Jesus had to pick up the lease, kick the devil out, knock him out of heaven, redeem mankind, die on the cross, do all the things he had to do, come back again, defeat the battle of Armageddon, knock the enemy down, put the devil in hell for a thousand years, and finish the lease that earth had for a thousand years. He had to put some things into order. And when this happened, it's almost as if the time ends, like this epic of time, this Kairos moment, however you want to look at it, and suddenly the devil is released out of here. He comes out, and then he makes war against Jesus and the saints. And the picture that I get is that they're all in Jerusalem. We are all there. By the way, you're going to be here. You know what happens during the millennial reign? We're going to have glorified bodies. And there will still be people being born or in the earth that do not have glorified bodies. That's why we have that craving for superhero movies. That's because it's in us. I'm going to fly. You get to do what you want, I get to do what I want. <laughs> Can you imagine that though? We can like have all the apple pie we want, and it's no problem. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but I think we're going to do that. I think that we're going to be there a thousand year reign with the Lord. And in that thousand year reign, we're going to be like superheroes. We're going to have glorified bodies. We get glimpses of it when Jesus was suddenly in the midst of them. And they're like, oh, hey, Jesus. You know, he'd just show up. Or Jesus would disappear from them. He traveled at the speed of thought. He ascended into heaven and appeared to many of them, 500 people. I believe that we're going to have that glorified body, and I think that's going to happen here. We go up in the rapture, we see him. When we see him, when we see him the Bible says we will be made like him, for in that moment we will see him as he is. And then we'll be changed in a twinkling of an eye. And the scripture says it's not yet known what we're going to be. We just know this is going to happen. The Bible talks about there is celestial flesh and there's terrestrial flesh. And we're going to be changed. I love this stuff. And then after that, we're in this millennial reign. We're going to be walking around. We can't die. We're going to be like royalty. He's the king of the kings and the lord of the lords. That means you, king and lord, under the king and the Lord. That means rulership. The parable of the talents when he said, hey, you know, you buried this one, you don't get anything, but the one who has 10, give him more, I'll make you rule over many cities. Many cities. Okay? So you're in this place, now the devil, he's been gone, he comes out after a thousand years, and he makes war with the saints. Now this is what's so fascinating to me. He rallies the entire world one more time that is not saints, not believers in Jesus, against him. A thousand years of peace, a thousand years of fixing the nations, a thousand years of correcting the earth, a thousand years that uh, Greenpeace could never touch. Okay? The WHO, World Economic Forum, children, they don't know anything. Jesus is fixing the world. The United Nations, they don't know nothing. Jesus is going to correct it all. And then at the end of that run, the devil comes out and deceives billions upon billions upon billions of people one more time, and they surround the Lamb and all of us. We will be there. You will be standing there when we are surrounded by a sea of people bent on killing you. And they're coming to make war against the Lamb. But like I said, Jesus doesn't have the final say. There's this little excerpt in Scripture, and it's amazing. I'm not going to go way into it. But suddenly, something magnificent happens. They're all surrounding Jesus. They're all doing the thing. And then it says, suddenly, fire 
comes down from heaven itself and consumes all of them. Fire. Now why is fire coming down from heaven and consuming all of them? I believe because Adam lost it, Jesus regained it, the prophets died, you read the book of Hebrews, you see how some of them were cut in half, so the world's not worthy of them. The New Testament church gave up their life, the blood of the martyrs, all these things. Jesus paid it once, he came back, fought a battle again. Jesus, he, he died, he did all these things, he defeats Armageddon, resets the earth, and then these people still rebel. They still rebel. How wicked you got to be to know the gospel, to know the history, to know everything, and then you see Jesus with your eyes, and then you rebel anyway. But this time I think the Lord God Almighty said, you know, I'm going to suspend the New Testament thing for a moment. We're going to go back to Sinai. Yeah! Thunderbolts and lightning! It's like the movie Megamind. You know what you lack? Presentation, right? I think he's like, we're going to bring this thing. Presentation. And, ding, 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 And I think the Lord shows up and he's just like, step back from my son and my children. And he wipes them off the earth. God's got that one. Oh, I like that. And people, people would say, well, that's sadistic. That's wrong. You don't understand the violation of God's holiness if you think the flood was, was mass murder. You don't understand the violation of God's holiness if you think any of these things are nothing but just. I wanted to say a very special thank you to our partners. Partners, thank you. Whether you've been a partner with us since the very beginning, the early days, or whether you've recently become a part of our partner family, I want to just simply thank you. Because of you, we're able to do so many things that we could never have accomplished without you working with us together. We're so grateful for you. And from the very bottom of our hearts, we wanted to say thank you to you. And we pray for you every day and we stand with you. And we're believing God is going to do magnificent things through this partner family in the coming days. As a matter of fact, I have a promise from the Holy Spirit about it. Now, if you want to become part of our partner family, or you're even on the fence about it, thinking about it, I would encourage you to do so today by going to josephz.com, or you can text the keyword give to 719-259-0029. Your partnership helps us advance the gospel, and it helps us fulfill the commission God's given us to raise up a million to reach a billion. That's lives. A million clear-eyed, clear-minded reformers to go win a billion. A million for a billion. And we know we can do it with your help. I believe with your help, we can impact the world. And we're looking forward to stepping into this at a greater capacity than ever before. I just want to say thank you and invite you to the family by going to josephz.com today. I am asking you if you will consider joining me for a prophetic state of the union on July the 4th, Independence Day, as we begin to go into a Sons of Issachar now word about the State of the Union, where we're headed, what's going on, and the Watchman anointing will begin to help us understand by the word of the Lord where we're going next. I encourage you to be a part of this. I've been praying about it, and I'm going to release to you a live understanding about where we are and where we're going. I encourage you to join us July the 4th, Independence Day morning, 7 a.m. Mountain Standard Time for this very important prophetic now word. It's a prophetic state of the union. Please consider joining us. I know this will greatly help you. It's going to encourage you, give you hope, because we're going into a season that we've never seen before as a nation, as a people, and as the body of Christ in modern history. But I've got hope for you. I've got good news. This is not the end. We've got a lot to talk about, and it's going to be live in real time. It's July the 4th, Independence Day, right away, 7 a.m. on this broadcast right here. Prophetic State of the Union. Please sign up for it at josephz.com. You can click attending. You'll get notified. Please sign up with your email. And if you want to get a notification on your text message, please sign up by going to 719-719-3637. And you can text the keyword join. You'll get notified by text. And please give us your email. And also just click attending at josephz.com. All the simple information is right there on josephz.com. It'll help you. 
but I encourage you to get notified of this very important prophetic state of the union. I know it's gonna impact you. You need hope and we're about to give it to you on July the 4th, Independence Day morning. Don't miss this. I'll see you there live. In today's world, there's a lot of noise and sensationalism by many claiming to hear the voice of God. They cite their predictions and their own experiences. Now, some are legitimate and some are not, but how do we know the difference? In some ways, prophecies become a mystified topic. Yet as global chaos is obviously increasing, it is imperative that we must hear and know the voice of God and true prophecy. I'm Joseph Z, and I just wrote this book, Demystifying the Prophetic. Now, it's taken me my whole life of walking through the Word of God and my own encounters and experiences to bring this to a place where we land at biblical truth and sound doctrine, yet absolutely celebrating the precious gift of prophecy. In this book, I deal with everything from trances and dreams, visions, deja vu even, different types of prophets, we talk about it. We even cover the topic of false prophets. How do you determine who's true and who's false? We talk about discerning the times, navigating strange encounters. People talk about angels appearing to them, entities appearing to them, they hear voices. All of these unique things we begin to deal with at a very powerful level with this book. I bring you straight to the written word of God, and I wanna say to you, isn't it time we understand the purpose of prophecy? After all, it is the spirit of prophecy that gives testimony to Jesus. It's time for results in your life. It's time for you to begin demystifying the prophetic. This book will help you. I promise you need this book. It'll break you out of containment. It'll bring you into a place of clarity and it will open up the understanding of the voice of God and prophecy functioning in your life by the written word of God. This is gonna really help you. I encourage you to get your copy today by going to josephz.com.